So, multiple people have asked, really, that we are on time to start, and they've also asked that I play an organ prelude every week, and so that's the organ prelude. And I ask that you listen. So, that time is to prepare ourselves for worship. The best saying that I ever heard was, before the service, talk to God. After the service and coffee hour, talk to each other. So that's our time for it. The choir is going to do the true prelude after Pastor Mac does the announcements. But it's great to see you. And on behalf of all the staff at the church, all three of us, um, we hope you have a happy Thanksgiving and safe travels. Thank, thank you, Peter. Friends in Christ, good morning. I'm going to... Maybe I'll, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll start the book over here on this side. I hope everyone has had a blessed week. And I hope everyone is uh, getting prepared and ready for Thanksgiving. If you haven't, you'll have to deal with the shopping crowd <laughs> uh, for the rest of the week up until uh, Wednesday. Uh, so, again, friends in Christ, um, blessings to you. It's good to see everyone here uh, in, in worship this morning. Uh, and, and again... Pray for uh, God's blessings to be with you, uh, for those, especially for those of you who may be traveling over the Thanksgiving uh, holiday. I, I did receive one announcement that I needed to make to the congregation. It was from Sherry Lee. She just wants me to share with the congregation that the cards for the Salvation Army uh, uh, Angel Tree, those cards are, are, are ready for pickup, so for those of you who would like to pick up a card, I guess you can see uh, Sh Sherry uh, downstairs and she can have a card for you to, to, uh, to, um, uh, uh, to, to uh, get gifts and, and things like that for the angel tree. And for those of you who want to know a little bit more about it, please see uh, Sherry Lee, she's right in the back, please see Sherry Lee and she can share with you about uh, what the whole Salvation Army Angel Tree program is all about. So Peter, would you... Uh, Begin us with a prelude. Sure, come on up, choir. And please do join us next week. We conclude the liturgical year. Next weekend is Christ the King, and two weeks, it's scarier to me than it is to you, is Advent 1. <laughs>
Heavenly Christ, I invite you to please stand as you are able as we turn to a words of our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess that, that we are not waiting for you. you. We, we are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are affected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. 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 Our gathering hymn is number 693, Come Ye Thankful People. Sing like Lutherans. <laughs>
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming, through Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And the congregation may be seated as I invite our young people up for our children's message this morning. Thankful for this year. 
Okay? What are you thankful for this year? God. God. <laughs> right answer. So it, it, when you go to Sunday school this morning, maybe, maybe, maybe Miss Lauren can begin by, say, by asking the class, what are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? And, and hopefully you get, you, you'll give Miss Lauren a lot of answers this morning in Sunday school, okay? All right. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming up, and I hope you have a good Thanksgiving. Or a, a good Christmas giving. <laughs> Christmas giving. I'm telling you. For you are all children of light 
and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. So ends today's reading.
but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. I once was told by a professor in seminary that sometimes you have to let the story be your sermon. Sometimes you have to let the story be your sermon. Well, as I think of those words, I in, in, in particular, as we look at this morning's gospel reading, you know, that would be all right to let the story be a sermon. But there are so many questions that are left open for us in today's, in today's gospel text. It's a story entitled The Parable of the Talents. It, it immediately follows the story of, of the wise and, and the foolish maidens that we heard last week. Now, I'm, I'm not going to retell the entire story, but I'm just going to briefly, uh, briefly just sort of outline it again for you. Before going, on, before going on a trip, a wealthy man, he gives his servants money to take care of while he's gone. And for the first servant, he gives the first servant five talents. And to a, a second servant, <coughs> He gives two talents. And then to a third, <clears throat> to a third servant, he gives one talent. Now, I, I, think, it's, it, I think it's important for us to, 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 to understand that in this story, uh, a, a, a talent is not something like, something like that, that, that we do really well. No, a, a, a talent is, is, is a form of, of, of currency. As a matter of fact, a, one talent was equivalent to 15 years of work. So, so think, think about, think about the, the job that, that, you, that you have right now, or the job that you may have had when you were, were working, and think about how, think about how much 15 years of, 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 of what you made, uh, whether, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100,000, Think, uh, think about how much uh, you would amass over, over 15 years. That would be equivalent to one talent. So in, in, in this story that, that Jesus is telling, uh, this, 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 this wealthy individual who gives his servants the, these, these talents, he's giving them a lot. He's giving them a lot of money. Well, in, 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 in this story, the, the first servant went away and he invested, he invested the, his, 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 uh, his, his master's money and he made five more talents. And likewise, the, the, the second servant did the same with the two talents that, that he, was, he was in charge of. But the third, the third servant, he, he went away and instead of in, investing the money he he hid his talent in the ground. Well, when the master returns to settle accounts with his, with his servants, the first, one comes to, the first one comes to his master and says, Master, you gave me five talents, and I invested it, and I made you five more talents. And then uh, the, we hear Jesus saying in the story that the uh, master says, Well done, good and faithful servant. Uh, uh, he entered, you know, you've been entrusted, and you've done well, and enter into the glory of your master. Likewise, the second servant, when he comes up to the master, he says, Master, you gave me two talents, and I invested in it, and I made you two more talents. And likewise, the master says, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been entrusted with, uh, with this much, and I'll, you know, I'm, I'm going to make you or give you a, 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 to be entrusted with many things. Enter in the, into the joy of your master. But when the third servant comes, the third servant comes and he says to 
his master, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, that you, that you, that, that you, that you, that you, you just, things, you, you, you do this, you reap, you reap seed, and you throw out seed, and you, you and, and whatever, whatever this, whatever this third servant did or said, it really, it really upset the master, because he says, you know what, I, Here's, here's your one talent that you gave me. I'm going to give you back. I'm, going to, I'm just going to give you. I'm going to give you back your one talent. And again, the, the master says, you, you knew, didn't you? You think you knew that, uh, uh, that uh, I, I, I do all of these things. And he says, you could have at least invested. You could have at least invested the money while I was gone. And, 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 and then I could... I, I could at least have one more talent. And, he, and then in the story, oh my goodness, in, in the story the master says to, about, this, uh, about, this, uh, about this third servant, uh, to, to, to those who have more will be given and those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. And he says, throw this wicked and lazy slave out into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh my goodness, where's the, where's the good news in here? Where's the good news in this story? Where, you know, what is, what is, Jesus, what is Jesus trying to, to say in this story? As I, as I read this story over the years, you know, I, oh, I've always had several questions that would come to mind. The first question is, well, why didn't, why didn't the master just give the, 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 all, all, all the servants the same thing? Why did he have to, like, Give one five and give another two and give another one talent. But it says that the master gave the gave the, the, the gave the servants a talent according to their ability. So I guess you know maybe that shoots down that question of why the, the master didn't give them all uh, equal talent is is because uh, the master the master already knew uh, which ones would would be responsible in what they had received. So, what is our story this morning really telling us? Well, one interpretation that I, I heard some preachers preach over the years is that, uh, that this, this, uh, this story is about not wasting our, not wasting our talents. Whether you have a, a, a talent of cooking, or a, a talent of teaching, or a talent of playing a, a, a musical instrument, or a talent in sports, or whatever you might be good at, to don't waste your talent. But that's, that's not what the story is talking about, because we already know that a, a, a talent is, is a, 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 a financial measure. We already know that a, a talent is worth 15 years of an individual's income. So, so what, what really is Jesus trying to, to say to us this morning in our story? Again, Jesus said to the disciples, for it is as if a man were going out on a journey. Remember, I think I shared with you uh, about two weeks ago that Jesus tells three stories or three parables that begin what, by saying, the kingdom of heaven will be like. The kingdom of heaven will be like. And in, 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 in the first story, uh, Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven being like, a, uh, being like a, well, that was actually last week, maidens who go out in, in uh, five, five wise and in, in, in five foolish. And then uh, pr prior to that, Jesus tells another story of what the kingdom of heaven will be like. Well, in this story, this third story, or this third parable, Jesus is, I guess you could say, he's saying the kingdom of heaven will be like. So the question that I, that I Sort of challenged, I've challenged the congregation over the past three Sundays is what are we going to do? How are we going to live our lives 
while we, while we, while we wait for the return of Jesus? Or how are we going to make, how are our lives uh, important or purposeful in, 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 that, in that meantime? I think another way of looking at our parable this morning is it's a, it's a, it's a story about risk. <laughs> risk involves gaining or losing something of great value. And in our story, the, the first and the, and the second servant, they were willing to, to take, a, take a risk. But they, 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 they could have lost it all, but they didn't. But, but the third servant, why? The third servant, he wasn't even willing to go out on a limb to take a rest. Maybe that's what Jesus is, is saying to us, saying to us this morning. That, that the gospel is risky. That, that, that being a follower of, 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 of Christ is, is risky. Sometimes it's a result of following Jesus. Some of us have, 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 might have lost friendships. Some of us have, have, might have, we might have lost relationships and acquaintances. Some, some people may have, have come up to us and, and said, you know what, Jesus is nothing but a fairy tale. <laughs> or going to church is just for weak women. But, but for us who have experienced the love of Christ, who have, who have experienced the forgiveness of Christ, who have forgiveness, the grace, and the comfort, and the peace of Christ, <laughs> we, we know that it's real. We know that it's real, and we know that, you know what? Even in the midst of taking that risk, we're going to still follow Jesus. I think I shared with you last week that I, 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 I'm, I'm a lover of, of Hallmark romance movies, and they're doing them 24-7, so I'm sort of like a... I'm a little bit of a happy camper, and my, you know, my, my DVR is like filled up with, 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 uh, with Hallmark movies. But I was, I was watching a Hallmark movie last week. I, there was a line in the movie that said, uh, where one of the characters said, uh, life is about taking risk. And, 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 and if, 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 you, if you haven't taken one or two risks in life, you really haven't lived life. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, following Jesus is about risk, being risky. Following Jesus is, 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 about, is about giving up and, 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 and giving over and, and, and giving our very lives, giving our very lives for Jesus. So I ask you this morning, what are you, what are you willing to, to, to risk in, in your following, following of Jesus? Or, 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 or what have you risked as a result of following Jesus? Yeah, friends in Christ, following Jesus is risky. But remember what Jesus says very, very much toward the beginning of Matthew's Gospel. Jesus says to us, those who want to save their lives will lose it. And those, those who lose their lives for my sake will find it. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn number 707, verses 1 and 4. Please stand.
and to God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath of life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, you give talents and gifts to all your people, and you equip the church to serve. Turn us from fear in self-serving ways, that we use our talents to glorify you and encourage our neighbor. <coughs> Hear us, O oh God. You have been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Sustain the life of the planet. Protect farmlands and harvests. Direct all people in wise stewardship of all the Earth's resources. Hear us, O oh God. You call us to honesty and integrity. Instill these values in the hearts of all nations and their leaders. Free any who are oppressed, expose all corruption, and bring redemption to victims of injustice. Hear us, O oh God. You teach us the counter days that we may gain a wise heart. Where there is sickness or sorrow, bring healing. And where there is loneliness, reveal your love and community. We remember for you, especially, uh, hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. <laughs> we pray for the faith formation ministries of our church. Give to all children, youth, and adults who study your word the breastplate of faith and love. Shape us by your love and show us how to encourage one another. Hear us, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that you strength and courage to those who are sick, shut in, and for all in need. We especially pray for Phyllis, Gail, Terry, Linda, Fran, Loris, Larry, Elaine, Nancy, Andrea, Ryan, Leanne, Bill, Barbara, Johanna, Mary, John, Ginny, Bruce, Skip, Bob, Tara, John, Thomas, Joe, Elena, George, Mark, Jack, David, Doris, Myron, Dean, Al, Jane, their Decky family, Frank and the Joblin family, Alan and Greenlee family. We pray for Kay and family of Pastor Jim Reeve who passed away recently. People around the world living in places of violence and war, especially Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine. We pray for those affected by recent disasters in Hawaii, Mexico, Libya, and Afghanistan. All victims of gun violence in schools, workplaces, and homes. <clears throat> Refugees and immigrants, and those who come to their aid. The unity of this church and its mission. Those struggling with grief, sickness, or injury. Those who are lonely and have no one to pray for them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you are faithful in all generations. For the promise of life and rest, and for the goodness of those who have died in faith, we praise your goodness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy through Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be with you and those who you love and you care for. And also with you. And now may we take a few moments to share God's peace with one another before all. <laughs>
gather you to the gates of our homes and give thanks for your rich blessings. We may peace upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. Amen. Now, friends of Christ, we will continue with the celebration of our Lord's Supper and Great Thanksgiving. Um, and for any guests or visitors in here uh, at Holy Trinity this morning, we practice open communion, which means communion is open to everyone. Uh, for those of you who care to commune with a gluten-free wafer, I can provide a gluten-free wafer, gluten wafer for you. And likewise, for those of you who wish to commune with grape juice, uh, just like uh, Charlie, um, our assisting minister this morning, know, and he will be able to provide you with a small, uh, a small cup of grape juice. So, friends in Christ, let us continue with our service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Let nothing separate me from you, 
and let me serve you in this life until my life breaks. I come to your glorious kingdom and an end of peace. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, there is a place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. Remember what the kids said. What's important? What do we do at church? We sing. Don't look at the organist. Sing with the organist. The hymns are on page 14 and 15. Christ be our light and I receive the living God. Please join in singing our communion hymns.
Christ, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, may it strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you'll set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Amen. And again, sisters and brothers in Christ, um, I, I pray God's blessings to be with you all, and I hope you all have a wonderful uh, and a safe Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, and for those of you who may, who may be traveling, whether it be on the roads or in the air, uh, also God's speed and God's blessings uh, to be with you as you go and you return. So friends in Christ, I invite you to receive the blessing. <coughs> May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. And may the blessing of God, Sovereign, Savior, and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. 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 Have a happy Thanksgiving. Please join us for coffee hour. Our closing in is number 632, O God, our help in ages past, verse 1 and verse 6. <laughs>